Welcome to the Globe Tracker Habitat Build Tutorial and Guide video series. As with all of our products, they are specifically engineered for the do-it-yourselfer, for the ease of assembly and quick start-to-finish completion of your project. Let me be the first to congratulate you on your purchase and welcome you into the wonderful possibilities that having an Overland Expedition vehicle offers. To start your build, ensure that you have studied and understand your engineering prints that come with your purchase. Then sort your panels and aluminum extrusions and familiarize yourself with how and where the components fit together. Report any missing or damaged items to Globe Tracker without delay. Be sure to leave all plastic films on the components until you are ready to work with that component. Then and only then should you peel back the protective film to expose the areas that will be prepped and adhesives applied. You will also need these common hardware store tools. At your local lumber store, you will need to purchase one half inch or equivalent sheet of plywood, two 10 foot long 2x4s, and one 8 foot long 2x4. Have the store cut your sheet of plywood in half so you are left with two 4 foot by 4 foot sheets. You will then need to cut each of these sheets diagonally and make clamping slots in each of the square sides. Use a drill bit to start the slot, then finish cutting out the slot with a jigsaw. Let's get started. Mark the roof panel ceiling where the extrusions are located with masking tape. This will aid in locating the extrusions on the inside of the habitat once the habitat has been fully assembled. Then set the roof section aside. Next move the floor section onto the subframe of the vehicle and carefully adjust its position so that it is centered laterally and that the subframe cross members are aligned with the floor panel aluminum extrusions. With a permanent marker and the subframe cross members as your guide, mark the bottom of the composite floor panel using the laser cut bolt holes in the tops of each cross member. Mark all seven bolt holes except for the unreachable holes above the subframe cross member pivot. Carefully slide the floor panel on the subframe rearward and to one side to expose the marks that were made. Think safety and wear goggles when drilling overhead. Use a one quarter inch drill bit in the center of each mark. Be very careful to center your drill bit, drill vertically, and not allow the drill bit to walk away from the center. Step your bit sizes up to reach a final size of 916 drill bit. Prep, 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 pro tip. Marking the holes, we're going to use drill bushings this time to make life easy for us. So we're actually going to uh, just use the drill bushing to mark the holes. And then uh, drill the hole in the floors, uh, test fit the flat bar, make sure the flat bar all bolts in nice and square. Take the frame off, flip the floor, and then we're going to actually glue it all together. Drill into the bottom of the floor through the subframe holes. Penetrate through the bottom of the aluminum extrusion and stop. Do not continue all the way through the aluminum extrusion. Use compressed air and a shop vac to remove any debris from inside the floor panel aluminum extrusion. Cut 3 inch sections of 7 16 20 all thread and remove the burrs. Slide the pre-drilled and threaded zinc plated steel flat bar into the aluminum extrusions of the floor panel. Use a 7 16 20 tap to clean the threads of the flat bar as a heavy zinc coating is used to protect the bar from any corrosion. Carefully thread each piece of all thread through the laser cut subframe cross member into the bottom of the floor panel and into the pre-drilled zinc plated steel flat bar. You just leave these in and this will keep a positional location feature that will actually help me put the floor pan back on and actually keep the flat bar in place where I want it to be. Very simple. Only the outermost pins on the left and right sides need be installed. 
So one thing I want you to note is when you put the frame on here, the extrusion, it's going to come all the way into the edge of the, the frame itself, the subframe. The flat bar helps distribute all the load of the box and the tubing all the way to the frame. So there is no shear point here on the composite paneling. Very rigid. When the outermost pins are installed, remove the floor panel from the subframe and place it on some shoring material or large sized dolly carts. Then begin to remove the outer plastic wrap from the bottom and top of the floor panel sides and front. Peeling back six to eight inches of protective wrap will do. Do not remove the entire protective film. Prep the panel and aluminum extrusion lower side rails by thoroughly wiping them down with alcohol wipes. All right, so here's a cross-sectional view of a corner assembly. And what you can see here is a variety of things. Of course, the thermal brake, the glued pockets that we're going to put glue, the Sikaflex in, glue capture pockets or optional glue pockets, a wire channel. This is for the 8020. It'll be a corner cap that's gonna come here. Glue channels for the vertical walls, load bearance channels for the wall to sit on. And that also lightens it up, but keeps everything strong. Dry fit the front and both side aluminum extrusion rails on the floor panel. Ensure that the rails are fully seated, they are properly aligned, and that the rails are square by matching the distance between diagonal corners. Then, temporarily attach the corner brackets. Mark the position of the rails with masking tape one quarter inch from the edge of the aluminum extrusions. This will serve as a guide when the extrusion is glued into place and a clean off edge after finished caulking is applied. It's time to take a little break and prepare to start gluing your first extrusions into place. And that is where we will pick it up in the next part of this Globe Trekker Habitat build.